Governor Malloy wants Connecticut to go green, and he says save some. In the fall, he unveiled a sweeping energy strategy aimed, he says, at connecting more of Connecticut to natural gas. Ryan Aldrich figures he spends about 800 bucks a year, at least on oil, heating his two-story, keeping his two little ones warm. We live just so we're comfortable. The prospect of switching to natural gas sounds good, except for the price, about seven to eight grand to connect, get a new furnace, etc. And that's if his neighborhood even had a gas line in. Uh, the cost savings over the years may help you know, benefit each household. But uh, to come up with $8,000 in this financial world would be very difficult. The state's new energy proposal offers some solutions to ease the upfront financial burden by giving homeowners and businesses financing with banks and other lenders 10-year loans that could be paid back right on your gas bill. It would cost you around $80 a month, but the governor says the average household could save about 800 bucks a year. A comprehensive energy strategy can help create jobs. It can make our state's businesses more competitive, and it can ensure that we preserve and protect our environment, the environment here in Connecticut, for generations to come. The energy strategy, developed by the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection, also proposes building 900 miles of gas mains with a focus on areas near hospitals, schools, or other high-energy consumption buildings, and a possible state income tax credit for converting both of which might make the idea of a switch more feasible for Aldrich. I may consider, especially if there's a tax break or, you know, some other benefits, but, you know, it would have to be over the long haul, yeah. maybe tied into a mortgage or, you know, the lines put in the neighborhood uh, so it would be more effective for, you know, not just one house. In Cromwell, Lori Perez, Fox, Connecticut. And joining us right now, Gene Guilford. He's president and CEO of the Connecticut Energy Marketers Association, uh, formerly known as the Independent Connecticut Petroleum Association. Thank you very much, <laughs> Al. I appreciate represent that. Represent the Thank gasoline you. distributors and fuel oil dealers That's right. around the That's state. Right. Nice to see you. Thank, Thank you, Lori. Thanks for, thanks thanks for being for coming here. In. All right, so the governor wants to make it possible, uh, less expensive for people to convert to natural gas. Now, natural gas is pretty cheap, isn't it? Well, right now it is. 24 out of the last 28 years, heating oil has been less expensive than natural really? gas. So actually, Connecticut consumers have saved hundreds of millions of dollars over the last couple of decades being heating oil consumers. It's only been very recently that natural gas has been less expensive. So you don't want this natural gas thing, obviously, because you're trying to protect the, the members of your organization, the, the fuel oil dealers. Well, yes, and, but here's the real point, because you mentioned in your, uh, in your initial package that there were 900 miles of new gas lines. The estimated cost of this plan is about $7 billion. One of the things that we haven't heard since its announcement is how it's intended to be paid for. So let's talk about the three areas that it could be paid for. Number one are the taxpayers. Now, previously you talked to a couple oh, of yeah, legis we a legislators. Oh, yeah, we got a few bucks left over if we can do right. that. Right. Let's, let's take that off the table immediately. Next are going to be the ratepayers. We're on the same side as the Office of Consumer Counsel at the Public Utility Regulatory Authority, the folks that protect consumers, who said that this plan can't be put on the back of ratepayers because ratepayers are already overburdened. So who would be the third potential place mm. to go in order to get this paid for? How about the utilities paying for it? Two utilities merged this last spring, created an $18 billion company. If they think that they can make money by extending 900 miles of gas lines in Connecticut using their money, not ours, not yours, not your viewers, God bless them. Come here and do as much business as you like to do. The government shouldn't have its thumb on the scale of picking winners and losers. Government shouldn't be telling people that natural gas is going to be less expensive. So you're saying the government, the state government is picking the picking utility companies as the, as the winners. For the governor to, to suggest that natural gas is going to be inexpensive for the next 35 years means he can also tell us what the winning lottery ticket numbers are going to be for next week, which he can't. This is the same administration whose deficit numbers change by the week. So if the deficit numbers can't be accurately predicted, how do they possibly know what energy prices are going to be? Markets are dynamic. They're ever-changing. We've had the advantage for a long time. Temporarily now, the gas utilities uh, have it for, for a short period of time. In this cold spell that we're going through right now, the gas utilities are cutting off their interruptible customers. They did to Yukon Medical Center yesterday. Why are they doing that? Because they don't have enough gas to sell. Well, I was going to say, because wasn't the governor's another point of his that it's not only about cost uh, savings, but availability in the long run? Well, but natural gas is not available 
how can they possibly take on 300,000 new customers if they can't even serve UConn Medical Center? Why don't today? they have the gas now? The cold weather makes it the cold not weather makes to it, get it very difficult in order to push all that gas through the system, and uh -huh. that's the reason why they're ending their, their interruptible contracts. But it and, works. And UConn was put on heating oil yesterday. It works, though, in other states, right? My brother lives in New Jersey, and I remember when this came out, I talked to him, and he says that everybody in New, in New Jersey is on natural gas. Like sure. 70 percent, I think I read that. And you know what? In a competitive marketplace where the government's not picking winners and losers, where the government does, it doesn't have its thumb, where consumers are left to make decisions, that's an entirely appropriate system. We think that multi-billion dollar corporations, utilities, are perfectly capable of finding where the customers are, investing their own money and investing in their own infrastructure, which is what every other business in Connecticut has to do, and then competing in an open marketplace in a fair, even transparent fashion so that we can all have a share of the heating market without government saying one is good and one is not. Is uh, natural gas better for the environment? Not necessarily, as a matter of fact, Yankee Gas, one of Connecticut's gas companies, filed paperwork with the Public Utility Regulatory Commission in 2011, Al, where it said it would take them 67 years to replace their old, outdated, leaking gas lines. 67 years. Now, the governor also mentioned in the policy that he uh, announced that he had a zero tolerance for leaks. So if the governor has a zero tolerance for leaks and it's going to take Yankee Gas 67 years to fix their leaks, it'll be 67 years before we get his policy. So do you think that there is a role that natural gas should play in our, you know, ongoing energy plans? It does already. Mm -hmm. In an open competitive marketplace where people are free to choose what they want to use, those choices get made every day. The fault of it is, is when, just as your two previous lovely Republican <laughs> legislators said, when the government tries to make these decisions frequently, it gets it wrong, and that's what we object to. Interesting. All right. Well, uh, Gene Guilford, we thank you for coming in and talking about this. This is uh, very interesting. Uh, thank you. you. You've given us a lot to think about. <laughs> Appreciate it very much. Thanks, thank Gene. You. And don't forget, if you missed something here in The Real Story, you can now watch it online just by going to our website, ctnow.com. Thanks so much for watching this week's edition of The Real Story. We'll see you here again next week.